Welcome to Food News Today. I hope you're all relaxing after a wonderful holiday and with just a few days left before New Year's, if you haven't come up with a new New Year's resolution yet, you might want to choose carefully. According to Psychology Today, after just six months, fewer than half the people who make New Year's resolutions actually stick to them. So for 2013, let's make this resolution. We will only commit to realistic resolutions. Now let's get started with this week's Food News Today. Attention all sushi lovers, you better watch out. A recent study from the conservation group Oceana showed that 39% of seafood samples that came from 81 New York City establishments, ranging from very expensive restaurants to less expensive restaurants to specialty stores, were mislabeled. And perhaps the most alarming, 100% of the sushi restaurants that were tested in the study had at least one species of mislabeled fish. According to Oceana, this is a widespread problem and not just in New York. New York's rate of seafood mislabeling was higher than Miami, who is at 31%. But topping both cities was Boston at 48% and Los Angeles at 55%. In some cases, cheaper fish was substituted for more expensive fish. And in other cases, more rare and low stock seafood was replaced by more common species. So not only are we customers being duped, but we're being presented with a potential health problem. For example, 13 types of fish like tilapia and tilefish were labeled as red snapper. Tilefish is one of the fish that the FDA recommends that pregnant women avoid due to high mercury levels. And 94% of fish that was labeled as white tuna, hey, that was actually snake mackerel, or Escobar, which contains a toxin that can cause severe diarrhea. So how can this happen? Well, we spoke with Gavin Gibbons at the National Fisheries Institute who says this is an enforcement problem, or rather, a lack of enforcement. But with the right investigations, it could be easy to figure out whether the mislabeling is coming from the supplier or the establishment. He also suggests always asking the supplier if they're a member of the Better Seafood Board. Now, that's the only organization that works to ensure seafood transparency. Holidays are a time for family, friends, and food. And the best part is, year after year, no matter what happens, many of us always go back to the same holiday traditions. So I had to wonder, what's the most unusual, cultural, or just plain quirky food traditions are in your family? So what did I do? I went to Facebook. And Corey has about the most unusual pickle roll-ups, dried beef that comes in a glass jar with cream cheese spread on it, and a dill pickle rolled up in it. He says, yummy goodness. I say, no way. Angela doesn't think her idea is quirky, but they have quail. Tasha loves Corey's ideas, but I've got to tell you something, Tasha. It ain't for me. I like your idea of a full bag of Oreos. And for Rachel, it's all about the 24-hour fruit salad. It's been a great food year and story year here at Supermarket Guru and at Food News Today. The year is almost at a close. So let's take a look at some of the wackiest, wonderful, and screwiest stories of the year. For over 200 years, cheese enthusiasts from around the world have gathered here to roll a wheel of double Gloucester cheese down the hill, which reaches speeds of up to 70 miles an hour. Following in the cheese wake are the cheese-loving competitors. Nan Dong and Nan Ping from Beijing decided to do just that. They create and play live music from instruments that are made entirely from fresh vegetables. For the Waikiki Spam Jam, the per capita consumption of Spam in Hawaii is the number one in the nation. So it's logical that Hawaiians gather to celebrate everything Spam. Displays showcase and vendors sell everything from Spam burgers and Spam fried rice to Spam t-shirts and other clothing. Willpower like a muscle can be strengthened and trained. How? He helped design the Chocolate Machine, a transformational product to improve self-control strength. The device itself is relatively simple, a tube-like dispenser that every 40 to 60 minutes releases a ball of chocolate. 
That's all for this week's edition of Food News Today. I hope you'll check out our new website design on supermarketguru.com and send me a message on Facebook or Twitter. I'd love to hear from you. Food News Today is sponsored by ConAgra Foods, who shares with me the desire to provide the most current, interesting, and unbiased food news. Thanks for tuning in. Have a wonderful New Year celebration. Don't drink too much, and we'll see you in 2013.